Hello everybody, welcome to New to Magic. My name's Dan. This week I've got for you a fat back from Magic Origins. Now I've got a bit of a new setup here as you can see uh, because I've recently moved house so I'm trying different things to see what looks best. You are probably going to hear cars going by and seagulls making an absolute noise of anything. Anyway, never mind about that. This is what we're here for, the Magic Origins Fat Pack. I get one of these every time a new set comes out and I unbox it for you ladies and gentlemen to see what I get. So here we go. I'm going to get cracking. Fat Packs generally cost around 25 to 30 pounds. Um, I got mine for 23.95. I pre-ordered mine uh, and I've only just gotten around to opening it because I've had a lot on, including moving house, which is a bit mad. So, yeah, you get your Magic Origins sleeve and there's a poster in there. I think I've got Jace, um, but I generally don't use those. Then you get the player's guide, which is a really nice kind of uh, well-printed guide on everything to do with the set. So you can have a look through all the cards. However, they don't have a tick doesn't look like they have a tick box thing at the end, but I don't tend to use this, so it doesn't matter. But noticeably missing a tick box at the end for those collectors who like to tick off what they've got. So, yep, yeah, you get that. And then you get your box, which contains some useless cardboard. You get two boxes, deck boxes, which are usually useless and I think these are just the same as usual yep they look about the same um, these are fine if you're not sleeving your cards however if you sleeve your cards these are pretty much useless and I tend to just uh, chuck them away and not use them um, so yeah I mean if you don't sleeve your cards then fine you know but who doesn't sleeve their cards so here you go you get we'll try this one first You get a set of lands, which you don't normally need. In fact, this is where your uh, your little deck box comes in fairly handy. I just go bang like that, and then I put that away to one side. And if I ever need, you know, if I go drafting or something like that, uh, or I go to a pre-release, I take one of those along with me, and I've got a ready-to-go brand new set of lands. Um, you also get, and we'll get to it in a minute, a spin down die, which I've got the black one here, and you have a little symbol on it. There you go, Magic Origin symbol. Lovely chubby. Uh, there's a rules and reference card in here as well. It comes with pretty much every Magic product. I have loads of these kicking around. That gets chucked. It's good for, you know, if you're a new player, obviously, great. And then, of course, what we're here for a nine booster packs uh, of Magic Origins, and I will open these. In just a sec. Also, like to highlight that in a fat pack you get a storage box. Now, storage boxes are, are really good if you've got a big collection. Uh, you're always looking for new storage, so having one of these is is great, and it's sturdy. Um, so yeah, okay, let's get to cracking some packs, shall we? All right. So let's see what we get. Hopefully some nice rares and some cool cards that we need. So, first up is Mighty Leap. I'm going to go f flying through the commons. Then we've got our first uncommon is Magmatic Insight. Blazing Hellhound. And Sigiled Starfish is our third uncommon. It's That's a really good card, Sigiled Starfish. And our rare is... Hixus Prison Warden. I got. I've got three of these now. Uh, I got this as uh, my promo um, rare for my pre-release. Uh, it's three and two white. Uh, you can flash him in. He's a legendary creature. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, if Hixus Prison Warden entered the battlefield this turn, exile that creature until Hixus leaves the battlefield. Oh, and we've got a foil, a blight caster foil. That is rather pretty. Uh, it's three and one black. Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may have target creature get minus two, minus two till end of turn. There we go. So that's uh, pack one, and you get your land and thing. I'll keep the rares over here. Ugh. See, I'm so unprepared. 
I shall put these in here. Right. Next. Next. I do love cracking packs. Although I tend to like drafting more because you pull the rares at the end. I will get rid of that. And I will get rid of that as well. Okay. So we've got. Okay. So Ravaging Blaze is our first uncommon. We've got Meteorite. Big old meteorite. Gold for Sentinel. And the rare. Molten Vortex. It's one red. So you pay one to get it out. And then you can pay one at any time to discard, uh, and discard a land. And it deals two damage to target creature or player. That's pretty neat. And oh, we've got a foil as well. Yes. Um, veteran Sidearm is two. Colourless. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one. Um... And it's equipped cost is one. And it's a foil. So that's another another foil. Nice. Right out. Next. This is a lot of fun. Two foils. Fairly chuffed with that so far. Ooh, we've got an angel token. Lovely. Keep that. Land. Right. All right, so we've got Iroas, or yeah, Iroas champion. Sorry if you can hear that noise behind me. I don't know what that is. Uh, Silver messenger. Uh, we've got Foundry of the Con Consoles. Um, you can tap one to add one to your mana pool, and the rare is Dwinnen Gilf Gilt Leaf Dane. Uh, it's two and two green. It has reach. Other elf creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Whenever Dwinnen Guiltleaf Dane attacks, you gain one life for each attacking elf you control. I'm kind of after a card like this. I want to try the elf deck, and I've already got a copy of this particular rare because uh, I bought the intro pack. Um, so yeah, that'll be that's good. Right out. Next pack. Ugh. I don't know if you can hear that noise. If you can't, then great. If you can, I'm sorry. Um, right. So let's just go through these very quickly. Oh, I'm revealing shit. Okay, first uncommon. Jiraga Invocation. Then we've got a Blazing Hellhound. Undercity Troll. And the rare is Shivan Reef. So it's one of the paying lands. You can uh, tap it to add one to your mana pool, or you can tap to add blue or red and uh, deal one damage to yourself. Uh, so pay one life to, you know, uh, get whatever mana fixing you want. So there you go. We've got a paying land. I've got nearly all the paying lands now. Okay. Next, oh, we've got a soldier token and a mountain. Eight, one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Doing my best not to reveal the rare as I go through. So this is a oh my gosh, a Griff Griffer Girper Girifor Aether Grid. I don't know how you pronounce that. Someone please tell me how to pronounce that. Uh, tap to untapped artifacts you control. That thing it deals one damage to target creature or player. Um, we've got Totem Guide Heart Beast. And a throwing knife. And the rare is Graveblade Marauder. It's two and one black. It has death touch whenever Graveblade Marauder deals combat damage to a player. That player loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Okay, onward. Nothing, I mean, some reasonable ones, but I would like, you know, I'd love another goblin pile driver. I want to play the goblins deck. Ooh, got a demon token. And one of those things. Ooh, ooh, is that a sign? Oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Is that a sign? Right, anyway, um, I'm going to try by. Yeah, I'm going to do it this way so I don't reveal the rare, because this could be a good one. Is that a sign? 
<laughs> right, first uncommon. Rune Servitor. Then we've got Tower Geist, which is a good card. Enthralling Victor and Ah, oh, it's Evolutionary Leap. Gosh, that that thing just really duped us then. It was like, oh my god, have we got a planeswalker? No. We got an evolutionary leap though, it's a good card. It's one and two uh, one and one green. You can pay one green, sacrifice a creature, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card. Put that card into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Uh, yeah, reasonably de decent. Not a planeswalker, but reasonably decent. Okay. Oh, we've got another one. <laughs> uh, don't get too excited, Dan. Don't get too excited. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got Blood Curse Knight as our first uncommon. I like this card. It's interesting. Um, turn to Frog, which is hilarious. Undercity Troll, and the rare. Nissa, we got Nissa, Vastwood Seer. It's playing with Walker. This is what we're after. Uh, it's two and one green. Um, when Nissa, Vastwood Seer enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic forest card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, if you control seven or more lands, exile Nissa. Then return her to the battlefield transformed under her owner's control. And she comes in transformed like this. She's Nissa Sage Animist. Reveal the top... You can tick her up one, sorry. You can reveal the top card of your library. If it's a land card, put it onto the battlefield. Otherwise, put it into your hand. Uh, you can tick her down two. Put a legendary 4-4 four, four, green elemental creature token named Ashaya the Awoken World onto the battlefield. And minus seven -er to untap up to six target lands. They become six six elemental creatures. There are still lands, and she's got three loyalty when she comes in. So there you go. We pulled a planeswalker from a fat pack. Happy days. Happy days. I felt duped by that first kind of planeswalker um, token thing coming up. Right. You know what? I'm just gonna go through this and not remove the back ones. I don't want to be um, duped again or get overexcited again. But that was really cool. I've got a planeswalker. Right. Whirl a Rogue, one of my favourite uncommons. It spits out two Thopters when it comes in, so you're get, getting four power for four and two of it's in the air. You know, distributed amongst three creatures. Really cool. And this is a real ability. Tap two, untapped artifacts you control target creature can't be blocked this turn. Can be really annoying for people. Um, Scab Goliath Skyraker Giant is our third uncommon and the rare is Demonic Pact yes this is a good card it's a mythic as well um, two and two black at the beginning of your upkeep choose one that hasn't been chosen Demonic Pact deals four damage to target creature or player and you gain four life target opponent discards two cards draw two cards you lose the game so those happen in whatever order you desire but obviously you lose, you lose the game should come last uh, what you do is you put this into a deck that has enchantment removal and then you're able to play this properly and I did really well with this on a draft I had this and a languish and it absolutely hosed people uh, and I've got a foil here a foil rare nice uh, Embermore Helion three and two red has Trample. If another red source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals that much damage. Plus one to that permanent or player instead. And it's a 4-5. Winner. We've got a, a foil rare in our fat pack as well. Uh, right. Last pack. But you know what? I'm really chuffed with what we've pulled. We've pulled value here. Absolute value, I reckon. Um, really worth opening this one in front of the camera instead of drafting it. So, let's uh, blast on through these, eh? 
So we've got Sphinx's Tutelage. This is a funny card. It's an enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, target opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. If they're both non-land cards that share a colour, repeat the process. Really good against mono um, decks. So if you're playing against mono red and they start binning into the library, it's just hilarious. Um, Shadows of the Past. Enchantment. Uh, whenever a creature dies, scry one. And um, this, actually, yeah, I really like this ability. It helped me out on my last draft as well, because I got this card and just kept paying five every turn when I didn't have anything to do to deal two damage to the player. Sham of the Pack. I needed one more of these, and I got it. Great. So I've got a full play set of these for my elf deck that I want to build, so that's cool. And our final rare is Hallowed Moonlight. Hello Moonlight is one and two one and one white. Until end of turn, if a creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile instead, draw a card. Nah, it's alright. Uh, so that's it. That's our lot. Um, obviously, really chuffed to have picked up Nissa, Vastwood Seer. Uh, and some, you know, we got a, a pain land, we got some decent rares that I was after. Demonic Pat's great, we got a foil rare. Uh, so all in all, this was a really great fat pack so yeah thanks for watching guys obviously fat packs are a good way to go uh, i always buy one every time uh, if you're a new player they're really cool for for creating a collection um maybe not so great for building decks but i don't know give me your opinions on on things like that uh please like comment and subscribe and all that jazz thanks for watching guys you've been watching new to magic my name's dan see you next time